Hi everyone, it's Miss Coward again. I am here with part three of Do You Do a Didgeridoo? We've already read the book, we've done a phonics lesson, and now we get to learn a little bit more about the didgeridoo. So you might be wondering, what is a didgeridoo? It's a weird word, but what is the instrument? Well, let's find out. Here's a few pictures of some didgeridoos. You can see they all kind of have a similar shape, but they're not exactly alike. The didgeridoo was first written about in Australia in the 1800s. We don't know the exact date it was first created or the exact person who created it. That's because it's an instrument of the Aboriginal people of Australia. Aboriginal means these people are native to Australia and they were already living there before Australia was colonized. So they passed down this tradition of the didgeridoo through spoken word instead of writing it down. Because it was passed down orally, we can't pinpoint exactly when it originated or who was the very first person to create it. We do know, though, the intentions behind the didgeridoo. The aborigine wanted to mimic the sounds of nature. They would sit and listen to the gentle breeze, to the wild animals, and every other sound nature would give them. Then they would use the didgeridoo to turn nature's sounds into their own music. Now didgeridoos are made of long pieces of bamboo or hollowed out wood. These pieces are generally three feet long or even longer. Aborigines knock on tree branches or trunks and listen for hollow sounds. If it's hollow, they'll cut it down, clean it out, and then test it by blowing through one end. Once the didgeridoo is functional, it can be decorated with paint. Many didgeridoos, like the ones pictured here, have aboriginal art painted on them. Now that we know a little about the history of the didgeridoo, we're ready to finally hear what it sounds like. But before we start, I want you to make a hypothesis or an educated guess. I want you to think about what it might sound like. And we have a few facts that can help us out. So number one, we know that didgeridoos were intended to mimic nature. So it's probably not going to sound like hip hop. Number two, we know that to make a sound, you blow through one end. So it probably won't sound like a drum since you don't blow into drums to make a sound. And number three, we know that didgeridoos are typically very long. And usually the longer an instrument is, the lower it sounds. So it's probably going to make a low sound. All right. Do you have your hypothesis? Let's test it out and see if you were right. Take a listen. So, what did you think? Was it anywhere close to what you thought it would be? Did you like it? Now, keep in mind, this was just one example of what a didgeridoo can sound like. There are many other songs that sound completely different that still use a didgeridoo. So, wasn't that interesting? It's nothing like the instruments that we use here. So, if you want to learn more or hear more, just search didgeridoo. If you want more authentic results, you can search aboriginal didgeridoo. And that concludes our three-part mini-series based on the book Do You Do a Didgeridoo? Thanks for watching!